What is good guys and girls? It's your boy, this dude. And today we got another episode of Awesome Amazing Animals. For today's subject at hand, we got the rattlesnake. Let's go. Y'all know how we do this. We gotta define what a rattlesnake is. It's a fairly big body pit viper, right? These dudes get pretty big for pit vipers. But this is the only pit viper that's gonna give you a warning before it bites you. In fact, I think rattlesnakes really don't even wanna bite. Aside from them being venomous, they're relatively chill animals. Wow, I know. Rattlesnakes, like I said, they don't wanna use their venom. They don't wanna use their venom on you, rather. And this is why they have adapted this this rattles to kind of let you know, not even just you, but other predators, anything just in their area that they're not ready to deal with, they're gonna give it a light rattle. If you don't hear it the first time, they're gonna let you know the second time. If you get close after that, they're probably gonna bite you. And their venom isn't too crazy, right? It isn't insane, um, nothing that's gonna attack your central nervous system or nothing like that, right? It's not gonna attack your, your heart, your lungs, it's not gonna go directly to, to your nervous system, um, it's more like corrosive, right? So if the snake bites you, the area that it, it bit you in will start to decay rather rapidly. It's usually just localized to that area. And you, you, we live in America, right? This is North America. So, well, I, I can't speak for everybody, but I live in North America. I, I'm out here in Florida. So we have anti-venin for every, everything out here. So you can get medical attention rather quick. This one isn't nothing to worry too much about. Once again, a lot of the, the, the people that end up getting bit by rattlesnakes are out messing around, probably had a few drinks, playing around in the woods. That's that's a lot of the cases that, that we seem to see documented. But for the most part, the rattlesnake bites aren't very common and deaths from rattlesnake bites are even less common unless you get bit around the neck chest area which in that case it's like how did that snake even get there right these aren't cobras they're not standing up head level with a six foot man no th these snakes typically want to be left alone they're very cryptic in nature they, they want to get away from you so if you get bit in the neck or the chest or the face by a rattlesnake you were 100 percent doing something you were not supposed to be doing and rattlesnakes come from a species of this is probably about 40 species or something like that. It's not like some of these other animals we talk about, like the spiders or the mantises, where you've got 300, 400 species and subspecies. These um, pit vipers, there's not really too many. I mean, there, there's quite a few, but it's not a super huge family. You know them typically when you see them. They, their pits are a little bit different than like the ones you see on ball pythons. The, the ball pythons, they have them they have like multiple pits on their lips, I think it is. Uh, many other pythons too. But the pit vipers, they have these, these two big holes rather, like right by, they, they look like nose holes. They help to, to create like an infrared image of their prey. They do a lot of their hunting at night and it makes it really hard for their prey to get away from them. Like their, their hunting rate, their accuracy is just through the roof because they could literally see their prey their prey is lit up it's kind of cool uh the same way like i said if you look at infrared like a human would be lit up in an infrared situation that's how they see their prey and it's rather unique and you can find rattlesnakes scattered throughout almost all of north america from the top to the bottom down all the way into mexico and they have a pretty wide range of like different habitats there there are some that, that live in like more like desert areas where there's not really much going on. It's very hot, not a lot of rain, not a lot of prey items, uh, like your sidewinder, right? They live out there in the deserts. And then you got like like your timber rattlesnakes or your cane break rattlesnakes that live closer to to civilization. Uh, they, they have access to, to fresh running water a lot of the times, um, jungle, forest area. Some of them prefer like the mountains and the rock areas and stuff like that and and will um come together in these dens to hibernate and stuff like that with with um many other rattlesnakes and other snake species kind of cool 
Um, there's even a rattlesnake that's like localized to a certain island. Um, this particular rattlesnake doesn't even have a rattle anymore. It hunts small birds, uh, the small birds that are all over the island. It's kind of cool, right? Um, there's a couple different types of rattlesnakes, uh, from very small ones to rather big ones. They're all just amazing. And as far as prey items, like I said, these animals, they hunt squirrels, uh, birds, rabbits, lizards, mice, um, all, all types of just different rodents. Um, they're re really good at picking up on the scent. They pick up old scents, new scents, and they're really good at following the newest scent. So the animal gets away from them. They're really good at picking up on the fresh scent and following this animal. It makes it really, like I said, really hard for the, their prey to get away from them, especially if they don't have wings. Uh, really, really hard. For the ones that do have wings, a lot of the times these animals just sit and wait they uh, camouflage in the area, catch them slipping, and um, their, their venom is very quick to work. Usually if they, they are able to strike a prey item, they'll follow it as it slowly dies, and then once they get to it, half, half the work is already done. But like, like I said, because their, their venom is very corrosive, so the, their food is already half digested by the time they find it. And yeah, they usually eat their prey head first, so none of the limbs get caught inside of the animal and yeah that's how they do their thing which is um a very good way of i guess eating prey because they don't waste anything everything goes to use they they ingest the entire animal you, you see what i'm saying when it comes to a lot of other species even like the bigger ones you like lions tigers like when when they eat a prey item there's usually a lot left right not with the not with the snakes, they have a very efficient way of hunting and they just digest their entire meal. Nothing goes to waste. This is probably also why these animals could go so long without eating, because nothing goes to waste once again. And these, these animals have a lot of other animals that prey on them too. You've got almost any bird that gets bigger than them, right? You got coyotes, king snakes. Yeah, king snakes don't care about venom. They don't care about that rattle. Um, if they find a rattlesnake, uh, that, that snake better just hope that that king snake gets tired before it gets to it because they don't care about none, none of that. I think king snakes are deaf, so they can't even hear the rattle and they're immune to the venom, perfectly designed for taking out a rattlesnake. Yeah, rattlesnakes have a lot of, a lot of different animals that prey on them too which is another reason why they use this rattle is to kind of ward off predators and if that doesn't work then they'll kind of sit up on top of themselves and get as big as they possibly can um once again a lot of a lot of the prey or a lot of the, the animals that prey on them if they're bigger they they don't care your coyotes your your possums things like that they don't care about that now as far as that rattle goes, it, I guess it gets bigger every time the animal sheds. Baby rattlesnakes are born with a rattle, with fangs, with venom, ready to go. They're practically independent day one. Ready to go, ready to hunt, ready to start living life as rattlesnakes. But um, as they get older, every I think it's every shed. I'm not exactly sure, but I think whenever they shed, there's another segment to their rattle. Their rattle kind of like figure eights across itself and it usually points towards, uh, towards the sky rather. Um, I think this is an adaptation to kind of prevent it from getting caught on things. The snake, like when it's shedding, it, it wants to get in between things and rocks and logs, branches, uh, things like that. Uh, I think it's adapted to, to have its rattle, like I said, grow towards the sky so the the rattle doesn't get caught on things as it's trying to shed or get away from predators or track prey, things like that. Um, and this is a, a pretty uh, easy animal to keep in captivity. I wouldn't recommend it. You know I don't do venomous over here, especially right now, maybe in three, four, five, you gotta get that some time. But this is an easy animal to get in captivity, ranging in price from like $40, $50, all the way up, rather cheap, right? Insane. I live in Florida too. I know people that have rattlesnakes and ain't even supposed to have them. <laughs> Let's be real. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a pretty easy animal to maintain and, and take care of in captivity. Once again, I wouldn't recommend it at all. 
I like I, I know people who who do this who have nice setups who actually handle them they free handle them it, they're, it that scares me I'm terrified of venomous snakes these snakes like I said are rather chill I'm not gonna get any more into how you can find them or anything like that like I said do your research but you can keep these animals in captivity they're rather rewarding too pretty easy to breed uh, in the wild I think a lot of these animals live in solitary they just come together to breed and and that's it and then you'll have a bunch of uh, live born pit vipers and I don't think they lay eggs so you know, I like animals that, that, or reptiles rather, that give birth to live born. Um, I, I think that's pretty cool. Incubating eggs can be a, a headache sometimes, so <laughs> I think it's cool when uh, they can just take care of that. But once again, I don't recommend this animal for anybody in captivity. Unless, of course, you, you're, you're a hot handler, like that's what you do. You breed these animals. If that's what you do, that's what you do. I, I, I tip my hat to you. We need people like y'all, but... I'm not gonna be doing that, not anytime soon. All in all, I think rattlesnakes are just absolutely amazing. Being from North America, this is one of those animals that we just bump into all the time, we see all the time. And uh, you kind of like forget how unique this animal is when you, when you see it so much. But it, I, when I think about it, it's the only snake that has that rattle, right? It's kind of cool. I just thought it'd be amazing to talk about it. Anyways, I'm your boy Smith. This is All Things Living. I appreciate you stepping out with me. Uh, you could have been anywhere on the planet, but you decided to be here, and that means a lot. Anyways, I'm out.